Welcome to this Developer Intermediate tutorial for Core Animator. In this video, we'll build off of the introductory video and go a little bit more in depth on two different topics. First, we'll go over the different variants of the animation methods that Core Animator generates for you, describing the options you have as far as what parameters to pass in. And second, we'll introduce to you the Views by Name property. This is a property that Core Animator adds to each generated class. We'll discuss why it's there and what you may want to do with it. So first off, let's just look at, at this trash view and look at the options we have here. So, uh, okay, so we have this add open animation, which is what we've used. We also have an add open animation that takes a completion handler. Uh, we have one that takes a removed on completion boolean, uh, one that takes both a removed on completion and a completion block and then one with just a whole bunch of parameters. So let's talk about each real quick. So first off, we have this add open animation that takes a completion handler. It kicks off the animation just as the original method does. However, it also allows you to supply a handler that will be called when the animation is complete. Note that this variant is not generated if your animation includes looping. This of course is because your animation is never really complete in that case. Of the variants, I think this will be the most commonly used. Animation, of course, is all about timing, and this method allows you to do things like chain animations together or trigger certain events when an animation is completed running. In this case, let's uh, modify our open lid method call uh, so that it both opens and then closes the lid. Okay, so we so we will choose this one with the completion handler. Um, now, this completion handler takes a single parameter that's a boolean, and this boolean will be true if the animation has been able to run to completion, and it's going to be false if it uh, ended early for some reason. So that can be that can be really handy um, to know. So all we'll do is simply add the close animation. So here we're going to add the open when it's done. We'll add the close. And sure enough, when we run it, it runs the open and then runs the close. So that is chaining animations together. All right, let's look at the next variant, and that is add open animation removed on completion. Add open animation removed on completion. In the core animator generated code, the default for this boolean is false. So if we run this, it's going to do exactly what it was doing before. So open. All right, perfect. However, if we change this to true and run it, the open animation is going to be removed when it finishes. And this is going to have the effect of making the trash can snap back to its original state. This is a property of CA animation and is a part of the core animation framework. Let's just test it out. So if we use true here and run it, you can see it runs to completion and then it's just immediately removed. The next variant is simply a combination of the first two. That is, you can both specify the value to be used for the removed on completion property, as well as supply a completion handler. The final method is one that takes the previous two parameters and adds two additional parameters, begin time and fill mode. And these are both, again, just passed through to the core animation framework. They aren't needed in the majority of cases, and frankly, you shouldn't have to worry about them. But let's go over an example of using begin time. With the begin time property, you're able to specify exactly when an animation should start. So in this case, let's get the animation to start one second after pressing the button. So CA current media time will give us now the current time when the code is run. So if we add one, it'll be one second in the future. We'll use uh, the fill mode of both. Removed on completion false and no completion handler. And we'll run it. So now once we press the open button, 
there's a one second delay before the animation actually starts. And that's an example of using begin time. Now there's one more method that is generated for each animation, and that is the remove method. This can be useful when you want to manually remove a specific animation that is currently applied. To show the effects of this, let's use the close lid method to run it. So we're just going to call the remove open animation method when we hit the close button. Open, you still have the one second delay, and it opens, and the animation is just there. It's applied, it's, it's in its ending state. When we hit close, it's just going to remove that animation. Uh, if you have multiple animations you need to remove, you can call this remove all animations. So those are all the animation methods. The final thing I wanted to demonstrate in this tutorial was the views by name property. And to do this, I'm going to implement view did load. Now, the views by name property, you'll see it maps strings to UI views. So, what this is, this is a dictionary where you can look up the actual view in the hierarchy that corresponds to each element that you created in your core animator project. So for instance, let's say we want to access the lid element of our trash can project. So what we would do is we'd come over here and this is the view that we want to, to access and we look at its name. Its name is trash lid. So we'll remember that and come back over here and when we access the dictionary with that name, we'll, we'll get returned that UI view. So here we have a reference to that view. And we really can do with it whatever we want. So you see here that we were able to just access the view and it's just a view hierarchy, so really we can do anything we want. In this case, we decided to turn the background red. But the point being, of course, is that you can just arbitrarily access any of the views that are generated through this views by name dictionary. That's it for this intermediate tutorial. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.